In this video, we're going to build a funk clav sound from scratch on the Yamaha YC series of keyboards, and we're going to do it step by step. Let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight Studio, and in this video, we're going to break down and build a funk clav sound from scratch that uses the wah pedal effect. Um, this has been a super busy summer for us. We've been out almost all of the summer, over 35 days, I think, in total so far. And I've really gotten kind of a workout on just the YC in a live environment, kind of how it feels, how it is to play, my favorite sounds, that kind of stuff. And the one sound that I use a lot, and it was a real favorite early on, is a clav sound that has a wah pedal effect on it. And the YC has just some killer wah pedal effects. So that part's great. It's a super fun kind of effect to play with. You know, just a blast to play, really dynamic. But the one thing I really noticed while playing live is that when using a wah pedal, if you just put the wah effect on one of the sounds, like for example, if you just take the, you know, the clavy S sound and play it by itself. It sounds phenomenal. And it's got a ton of grit and punch in the low end, especially. However, the second you put it through a wah pedal, you can hear it thins way out. Now this is true of any wah pedal or any when I had my old clavinet D6 and I would put that through a Dunlop, the same thing would happen. It would cut the bottom off because it's filtering out the sound. But live, you really need that low end, that guts. So in this video, we're gonna break down how to build a sound that has all that low end still intact, but still uses the wah pedal effect. All right, let's jump in and check it out. So I first wanted to start out with the actual foot pedals that I use live. One of them is the Yamaha FC7. Now this is their standard expression foot controller pedal and it works great. It's heavy so it's got some heft to it. It's not sliding around on the floor. It's got really nice feet on it so it stays put. But the one thing it doesn't have is there's no spring or anything in here to give you some resistance against. So if you're an organ player using this for a volume swell, you're gonna be right in home territory because it works great for that. But for things like effects where you kind of have to, to ride the pedal, almost stand on it, like if you're a standing keyboard player and you're standing on one foot and you're riding the pedal with the other foot, there just isn't enough resistance in this kind of, or this design of pedal to make that easy without way overdoing it. So great for volume swells and that kind of stuff. But the pedal that I use for filtered effects like the wah pedal effect is actually this. It's a Moog EP3. Now I'll leave both of these in the links below so you can check them out. But the great thing about the Moog, aside from the fact that it's really heavy, it's a lot like you know a Dunlop or something like that. And it's got a lot of resistance. Like there's actually a lot of resistance in the, the pedal throw itself. And you can even adjust that if you have a little wrench and stuff. And the throw of it is adjustable as well. So that makes this a great contender for a live environment where it's a lot less precise. You're not in a studio, that kind of stuff. If you're standing on your back foot and you're riding this, you're also kind of using it for balance as well. So it's pretty easy to overdo it. And you really need a heavy pedal that's not gonna move around. And you also need one with some resistance. So this is great for filtered effects that change over time, like opening and closing filters or like a wah pedal effect like that. We're gonna start with an initialized sound. And the reason why is just to illustrate how easy it is to put sounds together, even complex layered sounds. When you have controllers and information like that, there are some menus, but really when it comes to just throwing sounds together, everything you need is really right on the face of the keyboard. And there's something to um, take note of for the foot controller assignments. If you have a foot controller plugged into foot controller one input, it'll automatically default to volume. So foot controller one input defaults to volume or expression and foot controller two input defaults to pedal wah. But we're gonna be using foot controller one in this example. 
But because we're building a sound from scratch, we'll show how to set up those assignments. But first, we're going to start with the first voice in our patch. So we're going to come up here and we're going to navigate to electric piano. And we're going to rock or switch up to the clav sounds. We've got two to choose from, clavy S and clavy B. And S is a great place to start for most of your clav sound. And clavy B has a lot of the same kinds of sounds. It's just a little bit more extended frequency in the bottom. A little bit different tonality, so it's great for building sounds because it's not a duplicate that's just voice lower. So we're gonna start off with clavy S and that's gonna be the sound we're gonna begin with. And we're really just gonna start with a couple of effects. So our first range of effects here, we're gonna turn that on. We're just affecting key A, key engine A at the moment. And for those of you that aren't familiar, instead of having to step through just all the tons of effects, and there are a ton of them on the YC, you can actually hold down the exit button and up or down the rocker switch, and it takes you to the category. So there's the category of all the delays, the category of all the reverbs, the category of all the effects, ring modulation. Cool. So we want to start out with the wah sound first. So we're going to go up here to wah, and we're going to change that to pedal wah. And our pedal wah is going to be the sound that we're going to use. That's going to be the effect that we use on our key A sound. And because our foot controller is still assigned to volume by default, we need to change that. So we're going to go into settings. We're going to come down here to controllers, hit the enter button, and then we're going to change foot controller one's assignment. So let's press that again. And currently it's set to expression, which is why it's controlling volume. We're going to bring this back down a couple and we're going to find the pedal wall, which is four. So now that's going to be controlling the pedal wall effect instead of volume. Now that we've set our controller high and low limits, and we have our first effect in place, which is our pedal wah sound. We're gonna set the effect itself. So we're gonna keep the depth of the effect right around 100 or 90 to 100. And this depth is just gonna be how strong the effect is. And then the rate is gonna control how much the effect sweeps. So really low, it doesn't sweep or open very far. So we're gonna put this at about 100 as well. And this gives us a really nice throw on the pedal. All right, that's our first effect. That's our, our wah pedal effect. The second effect we're going to use is going to be a compressor. So we're going to hold down the exit button, and then we're going to up arrow to the category of compressors. And then here we're going to choose, let's see, we'll come up here and we'll choose just the basic compressor. And this is really going to be just to rein in the pedal wah effect. Sometimes as it sweeps through the mid-range frequencies, and this is true really all wah pedals, the mids, especially at the high point of that apex, can be pretty harsh. So this, we're not gonna set super aggressively. It's, we're gonna keep the depth of it at about 40, and then we're gonna use the other effect to bring the volume of it, the output up. So we're gonna leave that set at about 90 as well. So now we have our first layered sound on keys engine A, that's our clavy S sound, and it's going through the pedal wah effect, and then it's going into the compressor here. We'll set some downstream effects up later at the end. All right, so now we're gonna shut that off. We're gonna turn on keys engine B, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go up to our navigation dial here. We're going to navigate down to electronic piano, and then we're going to step through until we find clavy B. And clavy B is the one that has a little bit more extended bottom range or bottom frequency. So we're going to use that to build a little bit more beef into our existing pedal wah sound. So our first effect we're going to put on here is going to be a compressor. So we're going to navigate up to the compressor EQ categories, 
and find just a basic compressor. And this isn't going to be set very aggressively either. It's going to be set for about a, a depth of 30, and we're going to use this to make up the level that we're going to need because it's a quiet sound by the time we get down here. And we want some of that bottom end growl. And then the second effect we're going to use on the Keys Engine B is going to be a harmonic exciter. It's in the miscellaneous category, and the harmonic exciter is going to add a little bit of grit down here to the bottom. And you could hear up here that's adding really high, high frequencies as we sweep the depth knob here. Right about there. And then we can back the amount of it off. But right about there is a good balance. That's got a really nice gutsy low end to it. All right, so now we have the basic sound for our Keys B engine, which is going to be the Clavy B sound. So we got our compressor and we have the harmonic exciter. Now it's time to balance the two sounds together. So we're going to turn Keys A engine back on. And now we're going to hear what it sounds like when it's layered with that pedal effect, the pedal wah effect. Now we can hear the bottom sound, the lower clavy B sound, still has a little bit too much high end on it. So we're going to turn off A and listen to just B for a second. And you can hear that's a little too buzzy because it's taken away from our overall sound. So we want to kind of calm that down a little bit. So we're going to take that harmonic exciter and we're going to turn the effect of it down a bit. There we go. And then we're going to change the harmonic frequency. It's exciting. And it's mostly just going to lower the overall sound. It's going to lower the frequency. It's exciting. So it's not as buzzy and harsh because we don't want it to steal from the other clav sound. So let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, so that's a great starting point for the overall sound of it. And now we just need to add a little bit of tonal stuff downstream. So we're going to use our effect sections for this. We can choose to have it be organ key A or key B, but because of our pedal wall sound being on key A, we're going to use it for that. And we're going to use the tone control for the same thing. We give a little bit of bottom end and we're going to use the top just to get a bit more of that edginess out of it. And this is the overall sound here. It's really right now we're only affecting the keys engine A, so it's really just our clavy sound, our clavy S sound. But it gives us the ability to tonally sculpt just key A. And that works really nicely layered on top of keys engine B. All right, so that's our downstream EQ effect for keys engine A. And then we're going to do the same thing down here with our speaker and amp combination. We're going to actually add a little bit on keys B. And we're going to step through here and we're going to add just a little bit of crunch to keys A. We're going to use a case sound. There's the bulk of our clavinet sound with the pedal wah, and we could use the master equalizer section at the very end of the chain here to even do more tonal sculpting, but I really use that and save it specifically for adjusting to room sounds, something that's going to control the overall gig. So if we get to the gig and we realize maybe the sound equipment isn't the same that we're used to, or it's, a, it's overall way too bright or overall way too dark, or there's not enough mids. I use the master EQ to solve those kinds of problems. I'll also upload this sound to Sound Mondo. And if you haven't heard of it, or if you're new to that, simply type in Yamaha Sound Mondo to your browser of choice, 
and it'll pop right up. You can create your own account here, but something to take note if you want to create your own account and upload sounds either on iOS devices or on a desktop, you need to be using Google Chrome's browser only. It won't work with any other kind of browser. And it's not just for Yamaha YC owners, it's also for CK owners, for Reface owners, for CP owners, for Montage owners. I'll leave info on how to get to the sound for your YC keyboard in the info links below, or you can just scan the QR code on your screen and that'll take you to the Sound Mondo site and the voice directly. Each sound and all the keyboard categories can be ranked each week by popularity and a bunch of other stuff. It's a huge resource and a really valuable resource for inspiration if you're looking for new kinds of sounds for your keyboard, in addition to almost kind of like being cloud storage for some of your better known sounds. Tons of other resources on here, information about each keyboard and all that kind of stuff and, and guides on how to hook it up to your PC or iOS. So a great resource, check out Sound Mondo. <laughs> All right, so there's a quick look at how to build a funk clav patch with the wah pedal effect and not have to give up the bottom end in the process. So hopefully if you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going and it helps me make more videos like this. Stay safe, be creative, add something creative to the world. It could really use it. Take care, you guys. We'll catch you in the next video.